Welcome to video for two. Um, I'm going to start this video by showing you my one sheet. I actually redrew it uh, for chapter four. Um, lesson four one was my power base and exponent information. Right below that, I did add another little uh, piece of information. I know we talked about this during um, chapter one, how the opposite of three squared is different than negative three squared. So the opposite of three squared is just like saying negative one times three squared. Well, three squared happens first, which is nine, and then the negative one times that makes it a negative nine. Whereas this one is negative three times negative three, which is a positive nine. You might wanna add that to your one sheet so that you remember that as well. So this section in the middle here is basically four two. We're going to be dealing with negative exponents. And so right up here at the top, I put 4 to the negative 3 does not equal negative 12. Very common mistake to just multiply the base times the negative exponent. So it's negative 12. The other common mistake is, oh, I'm just going to take 4 to the third power, which is 64. And because it's a negative exponent, I'm just going to plop on a negative to my answer. Again, common mistakes, but not the right answer. 4 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 64. Something that you will not see in a textbook, it's just more my wording so that I remember, negative exponents move and become positive. And what I mean by that, 4 to the negative 3 moves to the bottom of the denominator, right? Um, and becomes 4 to the positive 3 and 4 to the third power is 64. But that's just a rule, um, or just sounds like you're trying to memorize something and that it really has no proof behind it. But actually, if you look at my pattern right here down the center, 4 to the third power is 64, 4 to the second power is 16, 4 to the first power is 4. And when we get right here to 4 to the zero power, lots of students say, to the zero power is zero and that is not the case because the pattern shows here divide by four divide by four what's four divided by four not zero one one divided by four is one fourth so four to the negative one power equals one fourth if we divide by four again we get four to the negative two which is one sixteenth and if we divide by 4 again, we get that 4 to the negative third power, which is 1 64th. So this section is all about negative exponents. And it's on page 141 to 143. But you also have a page in your interactive study guide, page 76. So I'm going to go over those answers really quick. You can do them yourself and then check your answers. Just pause the video and then come back and check. Um, but number one is 4 to the negative third power. So number 1 should be 1 64th. Okay? Number 2 is 6 to the negative 2 power. So that is 1 over 36. Okay? For number 3, it's 1 25th. Now in order for that 25 to be in the denominator, then we would have had to have a negative exponent, and we know that 5 squared is 25, so 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 25. For number 4, it is 1 over 216. Again, in order for that to be on the denominator, sorry about that, we know that it had to be a negative exponent, and 216 is actually 6 cubed. So in order for it to move to the bottom, it have to be, ooh, that does not look like 6 to the negative third. 6 to the negative third power. For number 5, 3 to the negative fourth power is 1 over 81. And number 6, 1 over 32 is equal to 2 to the negative 5. For number 7, it says fill in the boxes to write 1 thousandth in three other ways. So one thousandth is point zero 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 one. 
which you see right there on page 76. But another way we could write that is as a fraction. We know that rational numbers can be written as a ratio of two numbers. So 0 0.001 can be written as 1,000. And we know that 1,000 is also a power of 10. So 10 to the third power is 1,000. But 10 to the negative third power would be 1 over 1,000. And then finally, it says to express with a positive exponent. So um, I think I got these mixed around. This one should be right here, 1 over 10 to the third power. Okay, so a couple different ways to write um, that uh, decimal that was given to us. On 8 through 11, it just has you substituting in numbers um, into those algebraic expressions. So a to the negative 3 would be negative 2 to the negative 3 power. Okay, so again, the focus of this chapter is dealing with these negative exponents. If I wrote this as a fraction as is, it would be over 1. So what I want to do is take care of negative exponents and bring them to the denominator and make them positive. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 over negative 2 to the positive 3 power. So once you move it, it becomes positive. So what we have here is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. So we have negative 1 8 for letter, sorry, number 8. Okay. Um, number 9. Number 9 is 6 to the a power. So that's 6 to the negative 2 power. Sorry about that. 6 to the negative 2 power, not equal, not equal to negative 12. Okay, it's a common answer. It's not equal to negative 36. Okay, it's equal to 1 over a positive 36. Okay, negative exponents want to move and become positive. So right now it's 6 to the negative 2 over 1. I'm going to grab this whole thing and move it to the bottom and have it become 6 to the positive 2, giving me my answer of 1 over 36. And number 10 is b to the a power. So b to the a power, why don't you look that out and pause the video and see if you get the same answer as I do. Four to the negative two power is equal one over four to the positive two power which is equal to 1 16. And number 11, the opposite of 3 to the b power. The opposite really just means negative 1 times 3 to the b power. And b is 4. 3 to the fourth power is 81. And 81 times negative 1 is equal to negative 81 for number 11. Okay, we're going to do a few more. Go ahead and tear that page out of your interactive study guide and paste it into your math notebook. And um, I'm going to go through a few more examples on page 142. So if you have your book open, you want to look at page 142 along with me. I'll look at example 1, 2, and 3 to make sure you have the resources you need to get started on your homework. For example one, it just has more of the same types of problems that we were just doing. So 1a is 3 to the negative 5. That becomes 1 over 3 to the positive 5. And this um, example says to write each expression using a positive exponent. So this would in fact be your answer. If it said to simplify, then we would go ahead and take 3 to the fifth power and write that answer. So uh, for number 1, letter A, it's just 1 over 3 to the 5th. For 1B, 1B, we have Y to the negative 3. We have negative exponents, and we want to make them positive. So 
So I'm just going to write down 1 over y to the positive 3. That's the answer. And letter C, 1C. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Say that out loud to yourself. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And that's not just some made-up rule that mathematicians made to make it really crazy for students in pre-algebra to try to memorize. If you make a chart of exponents, it doesn't matter what number you choose, you can choose the base of 53 or 2 or negative 17. I'm not sure that negative 17 would work. Anyway, um, just show the pattern of the exponents and when you get to 4 to the 0 power, it equals 1 because the pattern is to divide by 4 each time. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, not 0. So the answer to 1C on page 142 is 1. Now let's look at example 2. Example 2 just has you going in reverse order where they give you this and you write this. Okay, so let's look at 2A. 2A says to rewrite 1 over 6 cubed using a negative exponent. So in order for that to move from the bottom and come to the top, we would do 6 to the negative 3, kind of working backwards. So 2A is 6 to the negative 3. For 2B, it says 1 over 25. Well, it says to write it as an exponent, so you might be thinking, well, I could just write down 25 to the negative 1 power. That would work. However, the direction said to write a negative exponent using a number other than negative 1. So 25 is a perfect square, so I will just write that as 5 squared. But in order for that to end up in the denominator, that 2 would have had to have been negative, so it's 5 to the negative 2. And then finally, 2C is 1 over 27. Again, you might be thinking, oh, it's 27 to the negative 1 power, but we're going to try to use an exponent other than negative 1. Since 27 is not a perfect square, I'm going to try a cube. And 3 cubed happens to be 27, but it would have to be 3 to the negative 3 in order for us to end up at 1, 27. Okay? That is lesson, sorry, uh, example two. We have one more to go here, and then you'll be on your way to starting uh, 4-2-1.